there, I am Kelly, founder of Gia's Italian Kitchen, and you are in for a huge treat tonight. So you'll notice we are in a different place. We are not at home tonight. Um, I would like to introduce you to our two guests. So you know Nana, my mom, and our extra special guest tonight is Tim Hankowicz, maestro, conductor, leader of Orchestra Iowa here in the great state of Iowa. Hi. In Cedar Rapids. In Cedar Rapids. <laughs> Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's the only part that actually matters in yeah, Iowa. Right. That's all right. Well, That's right. Eh. <laughs> there go your ratings. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to talk a little bit about the orchestra, and we're going to make a uh, an amazing dinner for you tonight. Tim, what are we making? So we're making three things as an appetizer. I just got some charcuterie, but I'm also going to um, toast some bread and uh, put a little bit of garlic on it so we can just munch while we actually do some hard work. Okay. And then I'm going to make a, um, a, an orange salad with a pickled onion. It's a savory salad even though it's got orange in it. It's absolutely delicious. It's a Lydia Bastianich recipe that I stole from my next door neighbor. Nice. And it's really easy and really delicious. And then, because it's almost like 30 below outside right now, <laughs> the best <laughs> pasta ever, we're going to make some gnocchi, which is a kind of a potato pasta with a gorgonzola cream mm. topped with a scallop and a little bit of bacon crumbles. So, oh, oh, oh. This is going to be good. This so, is going to be amazing. So where where are we? So we, we've prep cooked a little bit of this because yep. we're going to pull this together. Um, and kind of show you um, the finished product, but we're not going to run through um, the, the full instructions on this. So, Tim, can you tell us what we've done so far? Oh, yeah. So, I've cooked some potatoes for about 30 minutes. They're cooling now. And we're going we're gonna to have my wife or Nona here to actually <laughs> peel them and then put them through a ricer, and we'll make the dough really okay. quickly. Um, we have, I made some bacon bits already. I was wondering if you could actually put some olive oil on the uh, bread and just okay. put it straight into the oven to toast. And then meanwhile, I'm going to pickle the, um, the onion for our salad because uh, I've already sliced this half a, half a red onion uh, rather uh, thinly like this. And then what you want to do is, is it can be kind of harsh. So uh, you, can use a, you can use regular um, vinegar with a little bit of sugar or you can do what I do and just go straight to mirin which has, has a little okay, bit of a softer, nice. it's not yeah. nearly as acidic. Yeah as white vinegar is. So you just put a little bit of that in there. And this is going to pickle while we're Yeah, it only needs to sit for about half an hour or so to, to, oh, take, wow. the, to okay. take the edge off. Okay. And then even better, uh, this is kind of odd. Why don't you put a pinch of white pepper okay. in there? But white pepper you usually find in Asian food, but for some reason just a little pinch of white pepper just makes that just absolutely pop. And then once that's done, we just let, have to let it get happy uh, okay. and we can put it together. Oh, of course, I gave you one that had... You gave me a brand new one. <laughs> brand new one. What? Okay, well, let's okay. see. What's that? Uh, right at the top. Uh, right at the top. Under the We're just going to toast it up just a bit. Where would I be if I was a little knife to get that? Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, So why white pepper instead of black pepper? You know, um, it just has a... For some reason, it, it just... Um, it, it, it just okay. complements the taste yeah. better. Is it um, less peppery? It's apples and oranges. I think the fact that it's called a pepper is a misnomer because people always think white pepper, black pepper, what's the difference? But really, uh, you will you will taste the difference and that's why you, if you ever have just a cut, um, a, uh, a Chinese dish, uh -huh. you'll, you will actually taste the, t the pepper a lot more, a white pepper versus okay. the black pepper, which we use in Western cooking all the time. Yeah. For some reason, okay. it just makes just a oh, slight, I can smell slight, it slight a little bit, bit of different. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the second thing I would like you to do is, as we start this salad, uh, we've, got some, we've got some oranges behind us. Would you mind taking an orange and just taking off the peel, okay. and then just cut them in rounds, like this. Okay. And then we'll plate it on a, uh, a platter that I have behind us. Okay. So and just cover the plate, and just it'll look gorgeous if you have something like okay. something like this. By the way, this is how you make it look good at home. <laughs> so just uh, put some rounds on it, and just put it on here, and then we'll start building the okay, salad. Okay. So I'm gonna do five or You've done one. I'm gonna do four more. Sure. Ish. Ish. Just to, to cover the platter. platter. To cover the platter. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. How long okay. Do you leave these in? 
Conductor, maestro, and leader of Orchestra Iowa. He's also, a, that would be him, a super, super, super foodie. So I'm learning from him tonight while we make this fantabulous dinner. So this is really exciting for us. It's lovely. So thank you for My having us. Pleasure. This is so fun. And I just saw you take, take a sip. So when we do our um, cooking classes, um, Mom and I always have something in our hands. In our hands. Oh. Um, so we, but Tim made us um, a special drink. What was your drink of choice? So I, I made a, an old fashioned, and by the way, just yesterday, and I just finished my old fashioned. Um, just yesterday, I was at a recital at John Schultz's place. He's a he's a local uh, luthier and uh, instrument uh, salesman, and he also plays in the orchestra. And he made some great old fashioned. <laughs> Mine is different um, because I use black walnut bitters. And instead of uh, a simple syrup, I use maple syrup. Mm. And I just, this, can, can you endorse stuff? Can you put, can you put the brand You know on? what? Let's do it because then we might get a corporate sponsor. Okay. <laughs> um, so normally you use bourbon on it, uh, but I've since discovered this rum called Diplomatico. And it is the most smooth rum that I have ever had. Um, most rums have sort of like burnt rubber aftertaste yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, Because they're made out of... Um, so, Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, please. Um, they have a burnt taste to it, a burnt rubber taste, because they're distilled from molasses. This is straight from sugar cane, and so it has a much softer flavor to it. So I've used this as my main liquor for an old-fashioned. So it's so with a little bit of black walnut bitters, okay. uh, some maple syrup, plus this, it's some wonderful. orange, and it's like... Wonderful. Oh, yeah. And it oh. doesn't taste yeah. like rum. Just... No, no, it does not. It doesn't taste like rum. Set, set, yeah. set it right in front of me here, because now the first thing's ready to go. Because this is really um, all you have to do. See how quickly that toasted? Nice. I had, it, beautiful. I had it under the broiler uh, oh, okay. for about, I don't know, four minutes or so. Okay. And so it's nice and hard. So what you do is you take a piece of garlic <laughs> right? yeah. and you just rub it. And the coarseness of the bread will actually break down the garlic. And that's enough to flavor a piece. Um, and so uh, Caitlin, who's off, off camera, say hello, Caitlin. That's right. <laughs> Caitlin, would you mind? Doing the garlic? Doing the garlic. Absolutely. There you go. You know, and Tim, that was something that, that we have talked about in um, in some of our episodes is how much garlic do you use? <laughs> you know, I think it's definitely a preference, but if the garlic is raw versus getting cooked, you use much less of it, right? Because right. it's yep. so potent. But, like, what's your opinion on what's the right amount of garlic for an appetizer versus if you're if you're sauteing it and right. putting it in something. So well, whatever the recipe says, I use one more. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah. who yeah. in their right mind like like, like it doesn't like garlic? I mean, yeah. and they don't deserve to be in the kitchen. If that's the case. You know, the thing about garlic is there's a lot of sugar in it that people don't realize. I remember in Canada where where Jill's um, uh, aunt. Uh, lived, there was a place called Garlic's, and they even made garlic flavored ice cream. Oh, that's so awesome! It, no, it wasn't. It was no. actually. Oh, <laughs> no, well, it wasn't. No, but what was interesting, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but the thing okay. is, is that it was an interesting dish, but, but there was so much sweetness in the garlic, and the more you, you slow cook the garlic, the more it, it, it becomes more mellow and becomes sweeter. Uh, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that they're they're missing out on the complexity of garlic if they just throw it in at the last bit. I always like to uh, at least throw it in the pan and, uh, until you can actually smell it cooking. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just blooms. And yeah. It's, it's That's wonderful. always my, the first thing I do. Mm. A little olive oil, oh. throw the garlic in, and then worry about whatever else you're doing. Yeah, off camera we were talking, always have quality olive oil. Yeah. It's not yeah. Really makes a difference. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yes, we we well so we Tim we talked about that um, I don't know maybe a couple months ago because mom and I the last time we were in Italy a few years ago before COVID mm -hmm. we went to um, an olive oil farm that um, you know has all of the olive trees and and it looks like you're going to a vineyard but yeah. you're not um, and you, we got to see their process and their presses and of course taste stuff and it's just amazing but the the one thing that they did tell us is if you're looking at a bottle. 
um, it should be the acidity level should be that point. It was 0.8. And if it doesn't even tell you what the acidity level is, they were probably crappy olives. So if you want a good quality olive oil, um, extra virgin, not, you know, there's a lot of other adjectives they can use, but that, that acidity level right. um, is what, when we were over there, they said, if it doesn't say that, like, keep, go keep looking. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that has proved, proved true when we, when we um, cook, you know, whether you're doing raw or, right. or cooked. Um, it makes a difference. It makes your, your dish taste better. My wife is also off camera. She's knitting right over there. And so I was wondering if she could actually put her to work and pour me a glass of wine because I, I, I grew up watching Julia Child and, um, and Jacques Pepin cooking all the yeah, time. And yeah, they yeah. would just get absolutely hammered on PBS. And it's like, like that, that is quality old style oh, programming. Because my, my old fashioned is gone a lot. But, uh, well, and he's yeah. still he's still online. Oh, I know he's amazing. I'm he's still, still online. I still have many of his uh, cookbooks, okay. and actually, after you pour me a glass of wine, I'll show show the cookbook. Okay. Here's the problem with Jacques Buffon uh, um, cookbooks. Um, he assumes you have skill, ah. and so when he when he starts with the recipe, he'll start with, well, butcher a pig, or he expects, he, he, or he'll just say, make a bechamel sauce, or something like that. He just expects that there's some basic standard knowledge, rather than saying, you need a tea tablespoon of flour yeah, and, yeah. and this. So, yeah. so um, his recipes are amazing. His uh, Paris breast um, dessert that we make all the time was amazing, but we had to make it like five times just to figure out what he was trying to get at. Because oh, he would wow. say, oh, okay. just make this dough until it looks right. Yeah. Well, well, we don't know what that is. Don't know what that yeah, is. Oh yeah, can you show it for the ca camera, well, Jill? We kind of do, Kelly. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Kelly, because when we're making things, it's like mix it together. You can feel how well, it's right. You're right. You're right. Yes. We do say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that takes experience. Yeah. Um, just yeah. Just yeah. Doing it over and over and over again, yeah. and then you know yep. what it feels like. Oh, and that's, that's been really right. tough as we've translated some of. Um, uh, Nono's recipes, Nana's mom, mm -hmm. because they weren't written down. And so we would make them and we would kind of chicken scratch these recipes. And as we're, you know, last year as we were getting um, Gia's Italian Kitchen going, we had to write them down. And you can't just say a handful of this and, a, you know, you throw a little bit of this in and you taste it and then you throw a little bit more of that in. You need measurements. So that was actually really tough to... Um, to get to that point where I had a recipe that I could share with somebody and tell them um, how they could do it and, and have it turn out right. So, yeah, that was a challenge. But I think we're getting there. It, we did, yeah. At, at one, I don't forget what we were making, but you said, well, just throw a bunch of this in. And did I say that? Yes. And said, well, I'm not a challenge. Yeah, what does that mean? I don't mean? really know what a bunch is. <laughs> What does that mean? So, so I, I should have, I stack yeah. these, or are they should they be flat? Uh, either or, depends how many you run out of. Um, so I've, I've I've run out. So okay, I guess I'll put them flat. Okay. Flat is fine. Okay. Yeah. So here's another thing. one of the one of the difficulties of doing a show like this because we're doing three different appetizers and three you know three different dishes is that there's really no lineal way of like going through each recipe because you have to prep things in advance. So. I'm going to show you something that's really amazing. Okay. So we in the Midwest, our seafood isn't the best, right? Shocker. It, it's shocker. Shocker. Yeah. You know, we don't want things straight out of the Cedar River. And so uh, when you buy frozen scallops mm. and they make it to the Midwest, they've usually been flash, fry, flash yeah. frozen yeah. in a milky chemi chemical thing. It preserves the flesh, but it can also make the taste of the scallops not quite right. So okay. one thing you do... Is to take a quart of cold water, put a couple tablespoons of salt in it, and a quarter cup of uh, lemon juice, and then you thaw your your scallops into that, okay. and, it, and it'll leach all that stuff out, and it'll freshen up the flavor. So that's what we're going to do. And then you have to what? let it, you have to let it sit there for about a half an hour. Wow! So but that's so cool. Tell your assistant to write it down. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll, better we'll yet, tell her to watch the episode. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll watch this, and then we're going to write that down, and we will post this oh, wow. um, on, on his trick on the scallops there. We'll oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. I just made some scallop linguine, and I didn't do that. Oh. 
So, um, oh, I'm so I don't know about you, but I am just going to have a taste of something here. We, right. we have uh, some prosciutto, we have some Daffanois cheese. Um, what is Daffanois? You know, this is uh, a brand of cheese that Jill discovered a couple years back. Actually, way back when Ben's had a... Speak up. Way back when Ben's had a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they can't hear you. had a charcuterie right. counter, and this oh. is one of their big pieces yeah. they carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, there's a lot of double, triple cream breeze out there. Okay. This is just the best one. Okay. It's just awesome. Well, well I'm going to do triple. what you just did. Oh, it's interesting. I think it's just a double when it tastes, it tastes creamier than a triple. It's just, mmm. So did you okay. get this in town? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You did. Okay. At a place called Hy-Vee. <laughs> <laughs> the Gourmet Market. See, I'm partial to St. Andre. Mm-hmm. Triple cream? Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Good stuff. Mm. Anything that just melts. Yep. At room temperature. temperature. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's funny. I, so I... We're going to write this down, too. Oh, yeah. It's really because good. Because... This should be in one of our episodes, Mom. Holy cow. Okay. The bread with the garlic, with the cheese, with the prosciutto. Mm. Okay. Mmm. Uh-oh. So what are you doing, Mom? I, I'm trying to skin these potatoes. If She's I'm skinning the hot potatoes and trying to keep her fingerprints all yeah. designed. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably still trying to cool up. So, so can we rinse it anyway? With water, water, or do you not want to do that? Just, just I think part, cause what, oh, okay. part of it is actually, I think, for it to uh, evaporate naturally, mm -hmm. I think. The way, the way you do this, first of all, the heat allows the skin to come off quickly. You boil it with the skin on. Uh, you're trying not to put more liquid in. I mean, the skin mm. comes off easily. Yeah, but it's, it's hot, though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to know, when you made that great drink, mm -hmm. oh, is this something that's going to put us to sleep or give us energy? <laughs> or, or get What's you it going to do? It might get you arrested. <laughs> so this is my secret sauce. Um, I hope, did you, you omit that from I, I did. I did. Actually, I'll, I'll show you. Um, I saw him squirt it into our drinks. Oh. Okay. So, Sorry, I took a bite just to say left. To your audience, forgive the inside baseball here. Um, there is a friend of the symphony for many years named Tony Nickel. Yeah. And he used, yeah, to, yeah. he used to work for the opera, and then he went to work for the Jacksonville Symphony, where mm -hmm. he is right now. As a matter of yeah. fact, I just yep. called him today. But anyway, God, five years ago when he left or so uh, to go to, to the Florida, his gift to me was homemade bitters. <gasps> And so wow. I, I, I followed the recipe and I made my homemade bitters and like four years later, I'm only half a jar down. How so, do you make homemade bitters? Well, it, it had everything from like spices to like... Oh, the uh, recipe's on there. Well, no, this is the recipes to make oh. old, old fashions oh, and stuff oh, okay. like that. Okay. But, the, but it required you soaking um, chips of um, uh, oak, oak wood okay. and cinnamon and other, oh, as wow. well as like... Hundred proof alcohol, you know, it's like, oh, it's, yeah, and you come up with this, and this is what bitters is. Wow. Yeah. And actually, uh, until I came up with my own concoction, Cobble Hill, a local I was just going to say that. Had the best old fashions ever. Because yeah, they make their own bitters. Because they make their own bitters. I've got the recipe right here. <laughs> Plus my, my, my black walnut bitters, so we're good here. Wow. So you put okay. double bitter in our yeah. drink? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got a little of that, a little black walnut, a little bit of uh, <laughs> okay. um, maple syrup, a little bit of rum, ha, ah, some orange. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Good. All right. Yummy. So. Okay, what do we need to do next? Why not? Let's go back to the, uh, um, let's put this in the frame. Okay. So I just, I cut five mm -hmm. oranges. And uh, just sliced them up, took the peels off, laid them on flat on the okay. on the tray. We have some Malden sea salt flakes. Okay. To give a little crunch, just put that on there. Okay. Ooh, these are big. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so not a lot. Right. It's milder than kosher salt, oh, so it's okay. not too bad. Okay. Just skinning these potatoes reminds me of stripping your wallpaper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I'm taking a little piece of <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe you saw my post earlier this week. Well, it depends when you're watching this video, but my mom has been stripping one of our bathrooms. We've got wallpaper mm -hmm. from like 1980 in one of one of our bathrooms, and she, <laughs> that's been her project this week, stripping the wallpaper in my bathroom. Bless her heart. <laughs> Is that somebody else said that? You must really love your <laughs> she, she, she loves me a lot. Well, I don't love you enough to strip the wallpaper in your bathroom on the lower level. Okay. You can be done. Thank you. Thank you. Caitlin, I'm going to put you to work. Why don't you put, the, do. don't you put the rest of the, the bread into that? Okay, so the next thing we should do, just drizzle a little olive oil on top of that. Oh, how cute. Look at look at his olive oil container. Is this a cello, or what is it, or a bass? Uh, violin. Violin. It's, it's actually a, a, a musical instrument of... With strings. With strings. That, that, <laughs> that vomits olive oil. I, just, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I'm just doing a little drizzle, not yep. too much. I'm not soaking them, but I'm Correct. getting a few little droplets on each orange. And hopefully I didn't just spray you. Nope. Okay. So the next thing, actually I would wait a little, just a little longer because the next thing we put on would be this. Just take the taste of it uh, and you'll see so how... So should I... Yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've, been massage, doing, I've been doing it, but uh, take massage. a little taste of it. You'll already taste how, how much milder the onion has become. I'm so excited. My mother-in-law makes... A uh, pickled onion as just a side dish in like a gallon jug. And I don't know, I don't remember what she does, but she uses the red onions. Mm -hmm. And it does, once they pickle, they are just phenomenal. Yep. Phenomenal. So, what do we put in here again? We put the rice vinegar and the white pepper. Yep, that's, that's it? it. No that's salt? It. You can if you want. Here. But you didn't put salt in here. No, you no. don't have to. I'm just asking. You didn't well, get that salt in here. Actually, that's not a bad no, idea. there's salt in here. No, but when you normally pickle these, yeah, you don't. I did. Well, you could. And the reason, I forgot about that, there are two reasons you use salt. One is to flavor, and one is to extract Cold, moisture. Right. And that's just a, you know, a couple pinches of salt. It's not going to flavor it too much, but it'll help get some of the, okay. the, the water out. Okay. Oh, I can smell it. It smells, it smells amazing. And then what else is going to go on this salad? We've so, got the oranges, the olive oil, a little bit of salt, the pickled red onions. And then, you, then, you, uh, then you throw on some uh, basil. Do you want me to cut, start cutting the basil? No, you can rip it up. Throw oh, it you're on. just, oh, you're yeah, just yeah, ripping it right. up. <laughs> oh, that's okay. right. Okay. Basil goes on the salad? It goes, it goes on yeah. the salad. Okay. Yeah. It goes on the salad. It's going to be great. So, so how we can now what? The now the next thing that needs to happen. We need to make some gnocchi. <laughs> so Tim, while we're making, well, tell tell us what we're doing next for that, and then I want to find out what's going on at the orchestra. Okay. Well, we have to wait for a while because now the next thing we do is we put the uh, potato through a ricer. Oh. We we'll have to wait for a while. For oh. Tim. Okay. Evaporate. Then we just add it to some flour and some salt and some egg, and you're going to see us put it together just so it's sort of hanging together. You don't over mix it. Okay. Cut it up, you boil it, and ready to go. How long does it boil? Is it quick? A minute. Because it's already cooked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of waiting as we're waiting for the potato to cool down. But basically, most most of this hard work has been done already. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, let me wash my hands here. Okay. And Hey, Jill, do you have more um, hand soap? Mm. Well, it's not. Um, yeah, doesn't want to come out. No, it doesn't. Sorry. Is it tricky? Is there a trick to it? No, not really. No, it's fine. I assume this I'm assuming this will be edited. Yeah, although. It's, 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 yeah. Although, it's really cute to hear my wife try and speak quietly off camera. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jill, it's all right. Yeah. She's over there. Yeah. And you're holding the garbage can. And I am holding it. Uh, so while we're on the edited out part, yeah. if you guys want me to do anything, just tell me, okay? Really, I'm here to eat. Okay, now what's the, what am I doing here? You can eat it. What? Eat it. Eat it. Eat. Yeah. It's, it's, right. it's so eat good. It. So, it's Mom, so we good. did the, um, whatever that was called. Okay. Duff and Waz. Say it again? Duff and Waz. Duff and Waz with the pursuit. Okay. And it was divine. It is. It really is.
Okay, so Tim, we're waiting for the potatoes to cool. Yep. Tell us what's going on at the orchestra. Well, yeah, um, it's been a tough year. Yeah. Uh, it's been a tough couple of years for obvious reasons. Um, not alone in that the performing arts have been uh, hit pretty hard mm -hmm. uh, because if there's no audience, there is no art. And if there's no audience, there's also no income. If there's no income, there's no projects. And so it's a vicious circle. Um, I'm happy to say that the orchestra has been very fortunate. Our, um, our, our patrons have been extraordinary, generous, and very patient with us. So we've, we've managed last year very well, even though we didn't play any programs. We were, you know, you're going to hear me say something that you never hear. I want to thank the federal government uh, for Triple P and for, um, uh, what's the uh, sequestered, uh, shuttered, shuttered venue uh, grants. Um, they've saved not only Orchestra Iowa, they saved the arts. Orchestras the across the world. Arts across the yeah. world. Yeah. Um, and, um, I'd be yeah. remiss to say that. You never hear people thank the federal government. I am very much grateful for the, how they, they pitched in. Yeah. Um, this year, uh, we have pretty much um, gone forward with a pretty much normal year. We, we didn't have to cancel any of our performances. Um, as this is being taped, Omicron is, is people are very, being very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. We got most of our performances done right before Christmas, just as it, as people as it was coming on on yeah. uh, on people's radar. So I think we thread the needle really well. January we're not doing really anything except a couple of chamber concerts, um, and then our next concert, our masterworks, is in well, our next first pops concert is in February, and I'm thinking that's kind of going to be on the downside of things. So I think we might actually. Uh, I wish I could take credit for having such great foresight foresight with all this, but I think we just lucked out and had a great season. What is clear to me that, is that people are really sick of this, and they really, really want to come out yeah. uh, and, and spend a night out. Yeah. Uh, and so our audiences have been fantastic, actually. That's so, excellent. Yeah. Well, the ones that we've been to, it's, it's mind-blowing, and it's amazing when you're in the Hall of Mirrors to see the people. They just keep coming, and they keep coming. So. Right. You know, to all of you out there that have that have been to the orchestra, you know what an amazing experience it is. But if you have not, um, you know, you should really take a look at the schedule and find one. You know, maybe it's a pops, maybe it's a classical, maybe it's something else. Right. But find something that piques your interest and get into the Paramount Theater because it is, it's a gem. It's a, an amazing, beautiful building and it's the home of Orchestra Iowa. Yes. And you, you, you cannot replace live music. What surprises me is after the, uh, after the flood of 2008 and the theater was restored, there are still people who have lived in Cedar Rapids for like yeah. generations, never visited the Paramount. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't know what they're missing. It is, it is a, an architectural it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. It is. Yeah. Uh, so just for the beauty of the place, and you know, I understand that not everybody's a symphonic uh, music fan. Uh, I don't know how or why you could say that to me personally, <laughs> to my face. But I, but I get it. You think that symphonic music isn't for you because usually what's keeping people away is that they're worried that, that they don't know anything, and they're worried that they're clapping the wrong point or that, uh, you know, the their, their neighbor sitting next to them is going to look at them weird if they don't know the, the rituals of the concert, the concert experience. That's all garbage. And uh, that may have been true before I came here. But, uh, you know, if you want to clap, go ahead and clap. So I, interesting story. So Lisa um, Pantan was uh, here for some of the holiday. Um, so Lisa, hi, I hope you're watching this. Um, and she stayed with us yes. um, for that week. And um, we talked about the funnest things. We had just a wonderful week. But one of the things that she mentioned was that back, and I don't remember exactly, exactly when it was, maybe the 1700s, 1800s, 1600s, I don't know, that, that um, the, the clapping was, like there's a big story to the clapping. Oh yeah, oh yeah. To what it used to be. Right, so, <laughs> applause. <laughs> So if you've ever gone to community theater and you know who you are, <laughs> there's people who are like cheering and, and ranting and raving all the time. And that is a time-honored uh, tradition uh, from the Middle Ages, meaning that they used to pay people to come in and clap. 
they would pay people to clap for the villain. They would pay oh. people to clap for the heroine or the hero. Okay. And, and they would, and in fact, if, if a, a young singer or actor wanted to create, uh, to build their, their, their career, they would go to specialists who would say, okay, well, for, you know, for 50 bucks, I will get you 30 people who cry during oh, your aria. Funny. Oh, yeah, so people are like standing up crying, booing, hissing. I mean, the show was in the audience, not on stage. Oh, funny. And then, um, and then in Mozart's time, um, they would show their appreciation with applause, obviously, but a symphony was considered a flop if they didn't applaud between the movements. Not okay. only that, if they didn't applaud long enough or loud enough to cause them to repeat the movement. Oh, wow. The, mo the, the composer thought, oh, this is a flop. Oh, you know, I mean, okay. that's, that's the power of applause. And so that changed um, at the beginning of the 20th century with lighting. And a guy by the name of Wagner wanted people to like focus their energies on the stage because for the longest time, people would go to the concert not for what was going on on stage, but they'd go there to gamble, they would go oh. socialize, they'd go there to drink, uh, there'd even be a bordello on the side. I mean, everything was going on as well as what was going on on stage. Okay. And so Wagner said, no, 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 you're going to watch the program. And so that's when they invented lowering the lights. Oh. And that's when he insisted on don't clap. Oh. And it worked because everybody was used to clapping all the time. And so when they stopped clapping, there, there's all this pent up energy. Then they would just go absolutely uh -huh. nuts at the end of a concert. Um, well, that worked back then, but now it doesn't work at all. And people don't understand the idea of movements. Like, um, so when you go to a symphony, there's any, you know, there's usually maybe three or four movements. And a movement to a symphony is like chapters to a book. But how do you know if you're if you if you're at the orchestra and you you're not familiar with the piece? How would I know when to clap? How would I know when it was the movement? Right. Unless you know the piece, you look at the you look at the the program, the program. And, you'll see, and you'll see symphony <laughs> okay. number five, movement one, two, three, four. And okay. You know, just like, hey, just, just okay. don't don't applaud until the end of the. <laughs> okay. Thing. But you know that even that doesn't work very well, nor should it. But. The thing is about multi-movements, which is so out of step with today's culture, is we, we, everything you hear on the radio is about three minutes, and it's a song, and there's words to it, there's concrete meaning to it, and then it's done. Mm -hmm. Song stops, piece is over. And so that's why people think when the music stops, the piece must be over. Where in fact, back yeah. then, yeah. movements are like chapters of a book. The book isn't over yet. You still have to figure out who killed it, who you know, you know, who 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 done it at the end of the uh, of the mystery. So, that's kind of why music, classical music, is out of step. Plus, it's also long. I mean, yeah. our attention spans have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So, yeah. you have to come to my concerts, <laughs> <laughs> so that not only is the brilliance of our music making, but you know, the power of my personality to explain to you what's going on, and 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 not be judgmental if you don't know. Because many of, like, listen, I've spent 50 years of my life learning my craft. I still don't know it all. You know? and, None and of so, us do. So I've so spent that too so, in my So if you think you're going to go to a concert hall and understand classical music after three concerts, no, it's, it's going to take you five, it's, it's an investment of time. But you know what makes you unique? So again, plugging, if you have not been to an orchestra concert with Tim Hankowitz, and you've been to an orchestra concert anywhere else in the entire world, you still need to come to one of these at Orchestra Iowa. And I will tell you why. When I first got here, it was probably, what, 10 years ago that I started um, at, at the orchestra. And what Tim does is before a piece, he will turn around and face the audience and he will tell you what the next piece is. He will tell you a little bit about what the composer was thinking about or what was going on in his life when he wrote, wrote the piece and what you might feel or what you might hear during that piece. But you educated me so much and the and just sitting at a concert was so much more meaningful to listen to it mm -hmm. because you had that little intro at the beginning that most conductors, they don't, they don't, they don't do that at all. Yeah. And so um, to, to just get an introduction to classical music, um, He's the man. It's also uh, giving yourself permission not to like something. <laughs> you know, just, be, just because you know string players are playing something and it's classical music doesn't mean it's necessarily good. I'm, I'm not going to admit exactly what, but there's a lot of stuff that uh, out there 
in the standard repertoire that I hate. I don't really. Like, I don't like it. No, it's not. You know, I you know I understand that it's. I understand why it's great. It just doesn't really um, appeal to my uh -huh. sensibilities. So it's okay not to like a piece, but so long as you know why you don't like it. Okay. You know, and if and if you've taken the time to hear it a couple of times yeah. and you still don't like it, you've got permission not to like it. Okay. You know, but if 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 you if you if you spend thirty minutes, thirty seconds at it, um, and you've only heard it once, and you say and you make a snap judgment. Yeah, it's not gonna. Uh, that doesn't convince me because um, classical music is one of these things that uh, it's an investment. The more you put into it, the more it's gonna, the more it's gonna pay right. back to you. And it's that yeah. in investment that keeps audiences away because it's that's not where, how our our culture is uh, is designed right now. Well, and let's talk about that. Let's expand on that because you know when I. Um, you know, pre-COVID, so let's throw COVID out the sure. window for a minute. Actually, hold that thought, because yeah. I'm going to put, because this is getting good here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my uh, wife here. Can oh, we you, need to move the potatoes. Yeah, can you start ricing the potatoes, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's, oh, I wanted to Let's find, actually, keep it in the same, the, the large uh, dish, if you can. Okay, we're moving to some potato production. Yeah, here. yeah. Okay. So what is she going to do? So uh, there are two ways of mashing potatoes. One is just like smashing it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, what ends up happening is that if you over smash it, it gets liquidy and kind of mealy. Okay. And where if, if you put it through a ricer, it's something yeah. like this. And it's mm -hmm. got th this, these holes at the end. So it mashes it, but it also keeps it airy. Oh. Because okay. the problem with, with, um, with uh, gnocchi is that it can get really heavy and gluey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So think of it like potato whipped cream. You, you gotta be careful <laughs> with it, you know, okay. so you put as much air in it as possible okay. before you start putting it together. Mm. So. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna cut things in half. Now, well, listen, I put her to work and now Jill's telling me what to do. <laughs> so we're cutting That's the okay. potatoes in half so they'll fit so in the rice. Fit the rice. That's really the only reason. That's just the only so reason. they'll fit. Yeah, okay. yeah. No great wisdom here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how many potatoes do we have? One, two, three, about six potatoes. So we're doing this about four pounds of potatoes. I, actually, I'm doubling the recipe. Incidentally, I am not this genius chef. I, uh, I subscribe to America's Test Kitchen and also to Fine Cooking magazine. And this is, episode, this is issue 90 of Fine Cooking magazine. Oh, so, okay. You know, we, give, we're hearing the secret. Give, it, give credit where credit is due because I don't want to be sued. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's really great. So okay. uh, roughly, I don't know, three cups of flour okay. with a little bit of salt and now about four pounds of potatoes. Okay. Um, I'm doubling the recipe because the regular recipe will feed about six. We've got five people here. Okay. And I'm going to keep some leftovers. So, <laughs> so there. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, that is so cool. Actually, well, yeah, on, yeah on, come up, come do that. In the, so yeah. see. That's so cool. Can you move the? Um, the there we go. Let's see if we can get. See the the texture. How, it's, how loose and fluffy ah. that is without it getting without really matching. crushed. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's so cool. That is so neat. Yes. Never, so it's not shredded. No, it's no. Not, and it's not shredded. No. It'll pay off dividends when we turn it into a flower. Okay. Oh, and actually, touch that's it. looking. Yeah, yeah, touch this. It actually gets um, yep. slipperier. Yep. It's, yeah, it's, and it starts to break down a bit. Yummy. I'm gonna. Yes, yeah, taste one. I'm just to test this. Is it still yeah. too, if it's if it's not too harsh, we can put it on top of the potato on the, um, the oranges. Does it still need a little time? I think it needs a little more time. Okay. I like it, but I love red onions. But it's a little. I can still taste the sharpie. The sharpness of the yeah. of the red onion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want to. But it's get, getting there. Yeah, we want to. We want to soften it completely. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to have some Charlesburg cheese. Yeah. So how are the scallops doing? How do we know when the scallops are done? Doing their little bath over there. So, good point. Um, so what we need to do is get some paper towel. Well, basically, it's, it, as soon as they, well, it's been 20 minutes already. We put that in for 20 minutes or a half an hour. And then we dry them out on some paper towel okay. and get them as dry as possible. Because when we fry them, okay. uh, moisture will prevent it from getting a crust on them. And you, yeah. and you want that nice yep. little crispness to it. So. Okay. Put that here. And then what else do we have? Oh, the sauce. 
sauce. Do we need to do anything with the sauce? Uh, soon, soon. The sauce, all it is, is uh, gorgonzola cheese, a lot of heavy cream, and a little bit of flour to thicken <laughs> it up. It'll all come together pretty quickly. So, okay. Once, uh, once we get our uh, potato dough going, this is all going to come together like really in, fast in, in minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's still a little frozen. Okay. Okay. We'll just leave that there. Okay. But, uh, that is the coolest trick ever. I've never I've ever heard, heard of that. that either. That is oh, so cool. It just freshens it up. Yep. Yeah. Oh my well, gosh. So before we put it in there, what did you say? Was so, kind of why are we doing this? So <coughs> most frozen coast. Unless you're yeah, unless you're on the coasts where you get your the seafood fresh, fresh yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Everything that's in, a, in been flash frozen has been frozen in this chemical brine. Oh. And it okay. preserves the, the, the texture of the, the flesh, but it also gives it kind of yeah, weird little. and fishy flavors. Okay. And so to get rid of that, a little bit of yeah. uh, salt water and some um, lemon, lemon juice. juice. Yeah. Yep. And rice that vinegar. is the coolest rice thing. Vinegar, right? No, just lemon juice. The rice, the rice vinegar, vinegar was in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're coming up to the salad. <laughs> the, thing I love, so, the thing I love about the salad that we're making, it, look, it tastes great. It's gorgeous. pretty. It's, it's yeah. really it's so colorful. Really yeah. pretty. Yeah. Oh wow! And Look at Jill busy. mounding. Super oh oh wow. wow! That is so cool. That's going to be a lot of gnocchi. So there. This is another kitchen apparatus that you do not have. I do not have that. What that was is the one so cool. that you were missing last night? Oh. Um. I, don't I can't. Oh, oh a um, not a springform plant. A bunt pan. Oh, I don't have a bunt pan. Oh, talk to her about bunt pans. Oh yeah. my gosh. We I have. Well, I used because we made. Um, and this is coming up. Well, it'll be past by, by the time you're watching this, but you can watch it uh, recorded in the in the Facebook page. We made the Harvey Wallbanger cake with the Galliano liqueur and um, fresh or, fresh squeezed oranges, and it was. It was phenomenal, but I didn't have a butt pan, so I used the, you know, the pan that you do an angel food cake with the Spice. thing in the middle. It worked just fine, and it actually probably worked better because you can take it was the middle take thing out. out. You know, you know, and so, um, yeah. So I don't have a butt pan. I'm not a baker, right? And I've admitted that. A, what is that? A rice crusher? A, it's, just a, it's called a ricer. A ricer. A ricer. Ricer. Yeah. I've no, never. but we're not bakers. We've admitted that we're we are. No, we, but that's not baking. No, it's not, but I don't usually, no, no, never make gnocchi. No. So that, true. this is super cool that, that Tim is sharing this with us because my grandma didn't make, make this, so I don't even know how to do this. Well, right. So, <laughs> so why don't you go over to the instructions and tell me how to make this because we got the next part. So we've got okay. the rice potatoes okay. and now we need two um, large eggs, slightly beaten. Is that right, Jill? Or I the whole egg or just the yolk? A whole thing. The whole egg. Okay. Whole thing. Slightly beaten, okay. yeah. Lighten, throw okay. it in. And then just mix it up. My hands are clean, so okay. uh, that's Italian style. Yeah. Use, Italian your style. Yeah. Yeah. use your hands. Gotta use your hands. Has it cooled? Has it cooled off? Yeah, it has. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, you'd want this to cool off for another like ten or twenty minutes, okay. just uh, because if you're, the whole point is to get the moisture out. Um, so the longer you let it evaporate, the better it's going to be. Mm. Okay. And the and the uh, the um, Egg is there just to bind it together. Because mm -hmm. you're already noticing as I'm mixing it together, now it's actually starting to turn into mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Joe, what's next? Um, can I add the flour? Yep. Um, add the flour mixture. Mix with your hands until the flour is moistened and the dough starts to clump together. There we go. The dough will still be a bit crumbly at this point. Okay. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. So how much So how much uh, flour are we going to put in there? Is that double the recipe? It's a total of three. Three cups of flour, all purpose, okay. nothing special. One and a half cups to every two pounds of, br of russet potatoes. Yummy. Yeah, see, that's starting to look like flour, yeah? I was going to say, it's almost starting to look like a dough. Exactly. Okay, and you want that to start you looking do. like a dough. Absolutely, because okay. that's what it is. It's a potato dough. Dough, yeah, okay. All right. And you're adding the flour in parts, why? Just so it doesn't get too floury, just to mix it up a little bit okay. better. Because you'll, you'll see that, when, like we did that last night when we did the Harvey Wellbanger cake, we added the flour in pieces, but that's baking, so yeah. um, I didn't know if that Because the last thing you want to do is like, when you have your gnocchi, you bite into a piece of flour, you know, it's like... <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> see, it's starting to turn into a dough. Love it. Okay, so while you're continuing to do that, mm -hmm. I want to ask you the question, um, back to the... Um, 
you know, live music in the age today. Okay. So I've got two teenage kids, right. and they say to me, well, I can stream that. And I say, it's not the same. It's just not. And and, and then that can be a teenager, that can be an adult today, where, where so much electronics, mm -hmm. um, the devices are so... Um, they're good, you know, the devices are getting better, the cameras are getting better, the sound is getting better, but it still is no competition for live music. So how do you bridge that gap with your audience? Yeah, so how do you describe that to someone? That's really difficult, Elena, and it's, it's um, an uphill battle because uh, with the advent of recording technology, people don't have to learn how to play an instrument. So if you go back 50 years ago, probably three-quarters of people played instruments at home. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're, of a, we're of a generation, if you think of uh, television from the 70s, um, the, the opening credits of All in the Family, Edith and Archie Bunker were, were singing on a piano. You're right. Yeah. There was a, on Happy Days, there was a piano mm -hmm. on the set, which meant that most people had rudimentary knowledge of music and played an instrument at home. There was music making at home. Now, the hard thing to compete with is you don't have to learn how to play an instrument now. Yeah. And all you have to do is just like turn your device on. Yeah. Uh, and so with an experience that that's what music is, not realizing that music is actually an interpersonal communication between living, breathing human beings, that's what music is about. Yeah. And um, music is also today, well, it, uh, music is always designed to be uh, a consumable com commodity. Um, it's designed for you to buy it, play it, listen to it, forget about it. And that's always been the case. However, um, What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, we play Beethoven today because it was just better than everything else. I mean, it's had 200 years of people vetting it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a reason we don't play um, um, Salieri, even though he was briefly popularized after the movie Amadeus. But, there's a reason why we play Mozart and the reason we play Beethoven and not their contemporaries, because they were so much better. And okay. it took years for us to figure that out. Okay. But it also was, people were playing it in the homes. It's the live music making mm -hmm. that makes all the difference. Okay, I think we're, I think we're here. Jill, what's next here? <clears throat> Gather the dough together and press it against the bottom of the bowl until you have a uniform mass. Got a uniform mask. And tra tra transfer it to a floured surface and wash our hands. Okay. Yeah. We will have a floured surface here. Are um, you going to do it on the cutting board or on your granite? Do it on the granite. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because Jill's going to clean this mess up after you're, after we're done. <laughs> okay. So that's pretty simple. Just flour, sugar, flour, salt, and potato, and you've got this dough. Okay. What now, Jill? Knead gently until the flour is fully incorporated dough is soft and smooth and a little sticky, about 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, so you're doing the whole thing still. Okay. Are we done with the bowl? Okay. But don't, but don't over mix it, don't or the dough it. will be tough. The dough should okay. feel very delicate. Okay, the dough is very delicate, so what's next? Move the dough to one side, making sure the surface underneath is well floured. Okay. Cover it with a clean kitchen towel. Okay. Yeah. A wet towel or a dry towel, or does it doesn't matter. It didn't stop. Because that's the thing when we make homemade pasta is you cover the dough as you're working your little piece, so cover the what you're not yeah. doing with a. Yeah, uh, it's amazing though. It looks a like wet dough. towel. It is a dough. It looks like it's dough. a dough. But, but it looks really like. Dough. Could you get a picture of that before we met? That looks like he's making pasta. It really does. Yeah. It's a big log, a big yeah. log of pasta. Yeah, it's, it's, or a loaf of bread. Or a big loaf of bread. Yeah, actually it does. It looks like a big loaf of bread. You got it? <laughs> okay, Jill, can you bring down the, the frying pan and put a cup and a half of uh, cream in it and start heating it up? Okay, so heavy cream out of the fridge. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we're getting heavy cream, which, which and then we've got... Um, heavy whipping cream, and is this was this a pound? Is that what we bought? A pound. We're going to do a half a pound. Sorry. Okay. I, uh, of um, soft gorgonzola. 
Uh, What's the difference between blue cheese, cheese and gorgonzola? Um, gorgonzola is a blue cheese, yeah. so it has that same flavor. It's not as uh, harsh as some of the others. It's a very mild blue oh, cheese. Okay. And in this case, it's also designed to melt. So may, actually, locally, uh, Amana Mate blue cheese would also work really well. Too. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so let's turn this on. And let's, um, if you follow the recipe, I think we just bring some... So what's going on back here? So, oh, uh, we're, we're getting the, the pasta water ready. Okay. And one thing that people always make a mistake about pasta water is they don't salt it. Why are you salting it? The flavor. Because the, well, the, the salt water imbues flavor to the pasta. Yeah, but we're putting a heavy, heavy salty sauce on oh, the gnocchi. Yeah. Oh, what? yeah, little thing. No, that, that is, a, that is a, an age-old <laughs> argument. Right, because no, my she grandma, did. she did not. No, she did. She salt. did salt her water. Yes. Okay. Touche. Oh. So let's do it. frozen, so I will uh, microwave them. Okay. Just uh, heat them up a bit. So, as, as we're heating the cream, how do you know if you've, like, overheated it? Is it going to start? Uh, any, anytime <laughs> when you see flame <laughs> and when it smells really bad. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you start, you, you don't want it any more than just, like, the little bubbles. Little you see little bubbles, bubbles, then that's it. Okay. Yeah. okay. What are we doing here? Oh, probably be oh probably the, beautiful. you can almost tell by the texture. It's, it's, that's beautiful. Here, have a, have a taste of that. That's awesome. So should I kind of sprinkle those on the, yeah. on, on the oranges? Let's bring the, okay. let's bring the oranges back. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sprinkle okay. that on top. How did that taste? Third of it's very good. It's very different. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, do you want to taste the onion? Oh, this is so cool. Mm, that's amazing. So excited. This is so pretty. And then what? what and it's going to be there? so flavorful. So we've got the oranges down on the platter, and then we drizzled it with olive oil, and we sprinkled it with um, a little bit of sea salt, and then we're putting the onion, yep. the pickled red onion on, and then we're going to put the basil on. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to julienne the basil. We're going to just rip, rip it up. And we're just on. ripping it up. Yeah. Okay. Should I do that now or should sure. I wait? Okay. Why not? Okay. This is a lot of onion, but it's pickled, so it's not going to taste like a harsh red onion. Oh, this is so pretty. Look at this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's so pretty. It smells so good. Okay, let me wash my hands. How much basil, Tim? Kill the plant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, half of it. I mean, make it look good. Make it look pretty. Your scallops. Ah, ah scallops. So, Tim, one of the um, best events, or I shouldn't say best, one of my favorite events, and I think a lot of um, people in town, is Bruce Orchestra. Yeah. So this year we had um, a wonderful turnout, yes. a wonderful concert. So tell me, is that your favorite concert? And how did last year go? And have you scheduled, have you written this year's? Or next year? It's, yeah, I guess 2020. Yeah. It's, it's, the hardest, it's the hardest program we did. Really? It's the hardest program right. to do it because logistically there's just so many moving parts. I mean, we have to put up the stage, we have to find the lights, the mm -hmm. uh, the generators, the porta potties, uh, <laughs> the food vendors. I mean, the volunteers. I mean, it is right. it is such a huge. It's a 
It's an event. It's, it's a huge event. It's and it's also concert. expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, the, the orchestra alone for that program is about $50,000. And when you put oh, on wow. the stage and you put everything else, it's about $110,000 a year. So. Just cost for that one day. Just the cost for that one day, which wow. means that even though we have, oh, you can make it bigger. Yeah, just more crude. Yep. <laughs> which, which means that when we have 4,000 people there mm -hmm. who spend 10, 15 bucks a ticket, mm -hmm. you would think it's like, wow, this is really successful. That basically covers half our cost. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so to come up with something that is that is fun and that's also spectacle, but it's also makes a, a statement to begin the season, that's really hard. And this year was perfect. Um, and yes, I'm in plans for next season already. I can't tell you what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. It hasn't been revealed yet. It has yet. not been okay. revealed. Um, um, but the whole idea is that it should... It should okay, Tim. Excuse me. I'm being called. Yes, okay. The cream. Yeah, we're going to melt that in there. That she's got it. Um, <laughs> so, so she's putting the, the, the gorgonzola, gorgonzola in, in the cream. The cream. Uh, so the real, what I really want to do is always put the orchestra in the best light and that they're playing music that was designed for them. No. So I don't want them doing arrangements of Beatle tunes. Not, I love the Beatles, but people want to hear Beatles the way the Beatles sound. Yeah, no, yeah, they don't want yeah. to hear an orchestra play arrangements of Beatle tunes. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're playing music that was designed for the symphony. And that sometimes means uh, classical music. Sometimes it means popular. A lot of it's crossover. So finding the content's really hard. Oh. Uh, and so finding the logistical challenges of uh, meeting them is really hard. So is it my favorite concert? It's our most important concert because everybody comes. So for, let's pause for a second because mm -hmm. if someone doesn't know what Bruce Orchestra is, let's just, because of 4,000 people, that means a lot of people in Cedar mm -hmm. Rapids yep. have not been to it. So Bruce Moore, which hopefully you know what that is on First Avenue in downtown Cedar Rapids, um, on the front lawn on the First Avenue side, we set up the stage and like Tim said, we set up everything for, uh, from a blade of grass to a full stage uh, to, to house 4,000 people. And then we put on a concert. And the, I think the coolest thing from someone who may be speaking to those maybe who have not been to the Paramount, this would be a fabulous event for you to try because it's outdoors and it's usually, um, while there might be some classical in there, right. I, I feel more comfortable at Bruce Moore in terms of um, less intimidation, right? Because you're not in an enclosed space. You're not like, shh. You know, when you're sitting um, in in a certain in a certain piece, kids are running around. Kids all over are the running place. around, and you're bringing your picnic. You can bring your scallops. And there are your, some hardcore foodies that are yeah, even, like, yeah. like, are even more. Bring your charcuterie and and bring your, your auntie pasta. Yeah, 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 and and you make a picnic of it, and it's it's a beautiful evening, and you get to listen to orchestra Iowa and maestro. I say it's our most important because the. Uh, um, that's where people who are intimidated to come to the orchestra will come. Yep. Um, that's where people who might not know about what we do, they at least know we do that. Uh, and that is also our community service to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually it has um, some emotional um, yep. history behind it because it was birthed out of 2008, the flood. Right. And when everything was shut down and people thought the arts were dead and everything, this town was dead, mm -hmm. We were the first to come back online and was with Bruce Moore Orchestra, and it was a symbol of renewal and rebirth. And so the fact that our first concert after the pandemic was Bruce Moore Orchestra, uh, oh, again, yeah. it was just yeah. yet another sort of uh, reinforcing this build back better sort of... Um, and a partnership with Bruce Moore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 it's crucial to what we do. Yeah. It's hard as hell to put together. Um, and it really stresses out the, the staff, but it's worth it. <laughs> right, Caitlin? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yes. <laughs> so, Tim, what are you doing? A little salt. Just little a little salt off. on the scallop. So, yeah. so if okay. you've um, seen him, he's drying these on a paper towel, okay. and now he's there you go. he's salting them a little. Yep, a little and a little pepper, okay. These are ready to go. So these are going into a super hot pan yep. or a medium hot pan? Super hot pan. Super hot pan. So you use butter, you use oil, you don't use olive oil because it has a lower smoking point. Yep, yep. So I'm actually using the leftover bacon grease. So, because <laughs> that's... Fabulous. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. So you need the whisk. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting close, people. Okay, what we're going to pull it together. So, Tim, what? while we're pulling it <coughs> together, what else do you want to share about Orchestra Iowa to the viewers? Uh, and, and, and keep in mind, this is going all over the country. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have customers in Portland right. and in Tampa and in Chicago. Yeah. So what do you want to say up to the local community but to the, the global community? I'll talk to the global community first. Uh, the Midwest is often viewed as um, flyover country. And so they think, what, what kind of great art could really happen in the Midwest? Mm -hmm. what, how good could these orchestras really be in Iowa? Because in the classical music fields, often there's um, a little bit of snobbery that, that music only exists on the east or west coast. Okay. And everything in the middle must be kind of not great. And nothing could be farther from the truth. I would, I would put our orchestra up against any orchestra our size and larger. Agree. For what we do, yeah. and not only in its programming, but it's in, in its execution. Um, and every time we have guest artists come or guest musicians to sit in with the orchestra, come they, they sit down and they go, "Oh my God, how can this be here? Yeah. This shouldn't be here. It's Iowa, and I say it, it it shouldn't be here. Therefore, it must be here." Yeah. Um, and so, for people globally, Iowa is not flyover. As a matter of fact, I think artistically it is as progressive as anywhere else. But you've got to give it a chance. To our locals, our locals sometimes believe it. Oh, we're flyover country. We must not be that good. <laughs> and I tell you, when I do the same program with this orchestra, then I go to other parts in the country and I do the same piece there, and, I, and they don't do it as well as they do it here. Of course, this is my orchestra, so they, right, they, right. they, they know me. And, right. and there's also advantages of conducting your own band. but. I have to tell you, this orchestra shouldn't be here. So it must be here because it is so good. And this is what always disheartens me because people think, don't believe what we have here is an absolute, nothing short of a miracle. Mm -hmm. And it is. And if it ever goes away, it won't come back. That's how precious it is. And because the music that we play, anybody who's in the classical music, business knows that the music that we play is so hard and the talent that's required to perform it is so rarefied. To get that here in Iowa, which is five hours away from Chicago or Minneapolis or Kansas City or St. Louis, it's a real challenge. Yeah, yeah. And to have a whole team to do that is is miraculous. So just know, locals, we have some we have an orchestra that that punches way above the weight class. And people outside of Iowa, no, we we punch way above our weight class. We're really great. Yeah. And if you have not come, come. You gotta come. You gotta mm -hmm. hear them. They are. They will blow your mind. Okay. They're so amazing. okay, we're gonna pull this together. We're gonna put, put this together. What's next, Jill? So she's got the sauce going with the heavy cream and the gorgonzola. The big pot is water. No, okay. We need to cut the gnocchi, and it's going in yep. the water, right? The sauce is, is pretty much a ready. Three-quarter diameter? Okay. Okay, so I need to, I, I'm going to double this recipe. So we need to roll this into three-quarter inch diameter. And uh, can you get some flour, Joe? Yep. More flour on this flour on the surface underneath. So what are you doing? You're kind of cutting it in half? Yeah, I'm cutting it in half. I'm going I'm, I'm to roll two rolls. Okay. Because uh, I'm keeping one of these ropes, and we're right. going to keep the right. Because once you make gnocchi, you got to have more. you got to have more. you got to have more. So why don't, why don't we roll a few, get them in the water, okay. so that we can show the final product. The final product. Yep. Do, a, do a couple scallops, in and there, then... In there we have a bench scraper. Can a what? One of these things. Yep. yep. Oh, okay. There you go. What did you call this? Oh, bench scraper. Okay. So you do this. Oh, to, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And Joe, would you put some uh, butter in with the um, bacon? The bacon fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long? How long are these going to uh, cook one, in the water? One minute. That's it. They're ready to go. That's it. Okay. 
capture the sauce better. Uh, I just like doing it plain pillow okay. style. It's just easier. Okay. Yep. Okay. When I have the fork, mm -hmm. I'm closing the raviolis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, there you go. Because when, when I was little and we would make raviolis, here, come in. There's, um, there are six stations to the assembly line of making raviolis. And I don't even remember what station the, the fork is, but depending on how old you are, that dictates what station you are. And Nono would not let you graduate to, you know, and you could do it Nona right. had the station, you know, and no, my grandma had this, she would make the dough. And She'd like, be the no one else would do that. Yeah. You have to make the dough first. And, and the then crank. crank. Make the noodles. But if you could be a forker, that was, that was like a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it's important. So the rafts don't fall apart. Yeah, because you're, you you're closing right, the rafts. The rafts will fall apart. None of these contraptions where you nice. just auto close. Okay. Oh, that's so. funny. Let's put the scallop We can in hear here. the pan sizzling. Okay. So we know it's put ready. All of them in there. Uh, for two minutes aside. Should I just dump them dump in? Them in. Dump them yeah. in. Okay. Joe, can you hand me a spoon while you're there? Okay, scallops are yeah. in. Great. Excellent. Oh, can you hear those scallops? Oh, ah. there we go. Also, it's a good idea to separate the scallops so they, they fry, not steam each other. Ah, okay. Look at this. Holy crap. I'm just giving the gorgonzola a stir because I love stirring things. Oh my gosh. This smells so amazing. Now, is, are there any milk in there? Not yet. Okay. Let's put them in now. Okay. And put the gnocchi in. So how many do you want to put in so they don't get crowded? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot. And are they are they sinking or are they floating? They sink and then what they float when they're ready. Okay. That's what the rabs do. Kind of like they don't Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Take sure. enough to pump them as you drop them in. Take one gentle stir. Wait until the milk all floats to the surface of the water and you cook them for a minute. Okay, Joe, you want to do that? Do what? Take the arm. Wait. Follow that? No, that one. I mean, you put them like, <laughs> <in>. like <laughs> all in? No, yeah. you don't want to crowd them. You don't want to okay. crowd them. Okay, we're almost done. This is going to be amazing. Oh. Uh, so do we need to flip the scallops? Yeah, How long do the scallops take? About two minutes for the first side, and then one and a half minutes for the second. Okay. Just enough to give it a nice sizzle. Cool. Did I oh, look, look at that. Strainer. strainer. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Tim? Not yet. Nope. Not, yet. Not yet. 17 seconds. <laughs> Are you doing that in your head? <laughs> no. I got the timer right there. <laughs> No, surprisingly not. <laughs> surprisingly not. Here, I need to. Okay. So, flip. now we can flip. Now we can flip. We're flipping the scallops. And then what you do is while they're cooking, you spoon the butter over the scallops. Oh, okay. Spoon the butter over okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh. Those are gorgeous. Oh, they're starting to float. Are they? One of them. Oh, they're starting to get there. Okay, Some of them are starting to float already. I need a platter to put that on because they're almost cooked. A okay. plate. A plate. Just a plate. Here. Just a plate. Yeah. There we go. Got it. Can I have another one? Yeah. <laughs> those, are the, those, are the, those are the dinner plates. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Look at that. Oh. Yes, she's spooning the bacon grease and the butter oh, on oh, top that awesome? of the salad. There you go. So it's important. Thank you. It is important not to overcook the scallops. Uh, so we're proving much. Because they'll, they'll right. get tough. Yeah. Um, I should have some. There we go. Excuse me. Oh, actually, why don't we show the audience here? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. We'll set those aside for the moment. And you know what? Because nothing... Oh, Kelly, you're going to love this. What? Watch this. Because nothing should ever be wasted. Uh-oh. Oh, so, watch this. Uh -oh. Watch this. Oh, oh no. Watch that. <laughs> Put it in the gorgonzola cream. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're here for good time now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're not worried about. Okay. Now. Oh, my. Uh, We're so close. We have about three more gnocchi that need to float to the top. Well, why don't, are there any that are ready that we can just uh, do a quick plate? Yeah. We will do that right now. And then we can. If you can get me a plate right now. Show the finished product. You bet. Wow. Oh, so you're actually. You're actually putting them in, wait, Becca. Oh my gosh, don't fall Well, I can put them myself. Putting, oh, putting them in the sauce. Yeah. So you're tossing it in the sauce, yeah. not just putting the gnocchi on the, gnocchi on the plate and putting the right. sauce over. Oh yeah, you gotta toss the sauce. Okay, so I need a spoon of some sort. <laughs> Bacon sauce. Okay, so let's plate. Okay, um, I need a spoon. Need a spoon. There we yeah, go. Yeah, he got it. There we, we go. We stole it in our plate. It's okay. Because we'll use that for. Yeah, that can be someone's plate. Yeah. And then he's going to put it on. So oh, we're going to put a scallop. Yeah. And we'll then. Can I use to put this? Yes. Can, uh, a little, can I have a little um, something to uh, serve oh, yes. a little yeah. orange piece? Yeah. A little spatula oh, or I something. Oh, okay. Now we're in a bit of a hurry Perfect. here, so uh, so we're topping it with more bacon. And more bacon. And, and a little bit of that. Oh, okay, a little fresh okay. parsley. So that you know, we gotta show the salad. Yep. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that awesome? Yum. That is gorgeous. And we have scallops and gorgonzola cream topped with a little bit of fried scallops, some bacon bits, and some parsley. Wow. wow. Thank you, Tim. Wow. This was amazing. How fun. Tim Hankowicz with Orchestra Iowa. Kelly Cole from Gia's Italian Kitchen. Thanks for watching. Let's get cooking. Let's get eating. Bye-bye.